Welcome to Wilmot Wild Lacrosse on Rogers TV, live from the Wilmot Recreation Complex in Baden, Ontario, as the 6-2 Wilmot Wild take on the 3-4 Caledon Bandits in Ontario Junior C Lacrosse action. My name's Jack Moore, and I'll be your host for today's game. Wilmot coming off an 11-5 loss to the Fergus Thistles last week, are looking to get back into the win column. As for Caledon, they've won two of their last three games, so they're gonna look to pick up another victory and continue this hot streak. The game is about to get underway, so we'll send it up to the booth. Jason Hagholm has the call. Back, and yes, we are underway here at the Wilmot Rec Complex here in Wilmot, Ontario. I'm Jason Hagholm alongside my, my broadcast partner, Ryan Smart. And Ryan, these teams met the first game of the season and it was a very back and forth competitive game where Wilmot won that one seven to six. Yeah, it was a really good game that week. Uh, Caledon is definitely a lot better than they have been the past few years. They got uh, some young guys the last two years and they've kind of grown into their own and made their team competitive again. And as Jack mentioned, they've won two of their last three and they're looking to pick up some points. They're only six points back of Wilmot and Fergus for I believe third right now, or yeah, third in, in the conference. So this is a big moment here, and there's a go ball that just goes across the line. Couldn't find its way through. Luckily, Fitton was able to steer that away for Wilmot. And now the Wild will break out here, passing it off Dylan Kuntz. Dylan stops, pops, turns the corner. Nice job to try to evade the defender as the player is streaking in. Throws it back across the floor there for Derek Jensen. Jensen breaks in, shot and scores! Jensen gets the scoring started early on here in, at the Wilmot Rec Complex. 1-0 for the Wild. Just some great passing by Wilmot. Able to get Jensen the ball and he broke in and made a pretty play as we take a look at it on the replay here, Ryan. Yeah, just a uh, nice pass and play to start and a uh, nice pick by Evan Girdler and Jensen used it and goes low and tiptoes across the crease and finds a spot to put it in. Well, here come the Bandits right back out with it. That's Huey Shepard. Now they get it across. Ball bouncing around and Fitton will just have it settle down on his stick very nicely. But couldn't handle the pass cleanly there was Hahn. Good opportunity, and now a ball bumped right in the stick right there of Ben Bishop. Bishop breaking a shot, scores! Actually should say that's number 24, Ryan Radisa. And just like that, the Bandits tie this one up very quickly. That's what just happens when you get a little careless in your end, can't handle the balls, and the Bandits capitalize. Yeah, those ones always seem to end up in your net. You know, I think that's uh, Martin in there for the goalie, and he just finds a spot by him after he beats uh, Weidman down low. I actually should say, yes, it is Caleb Martin starting for the Wilmot Wild. Reed Fitton getting the rest today. Whistle go went, but still will be the Bandits ball. Throws it back across to the Bandits. Looking for that space separation. Bouncing off the wall, and luckily for Wilmot, it went right in Martin's stick. And these boards really bouncy here at the Wilmot Rec Complex, and so far, Wilmot totally hasn't been beaten up by them. Oh, Ooh. nice behind the back goal! That's absolutely beautiful! Put that on a picture frame, a highlight reel for seasons to come. Tyler Nagy, have yourself a goal. That was absolutely beautiful as we take a look at it on the replay, Ryan. Yeah, just uh, good work by Colton Bessie running up the floor there and sneaks a pass into Nagy and he always finds a way to get those backhand goals behind the back around the world goals. He just got a really good stick out there. Well, in the last game between these two teams, Tyler Nagy had himself a four point game, a hat trick and an assist. So you know that Kaladin, when they went into today, knew they had to find a way to slow down Nagy and so far, not the way they want to have have done to play Nagy as he gets that goal. A beautiful goal very quickly, but it's so tough to stop down stop the likes of Tyler Nagy and the rest of this Wilmot team, Ryan. 
Yeah, it sure is. Once uh, they get rolling in transition off the bench, uh, Nagy's just a pure finisher out there. And here's another guy that's really picked up his game, Hayden Berger. Made the pass out for Bessie. Spinning away from that's Kent Radburn. Radburn trying to get away from his the defender there, and Bryce Thompson. Shot got deflected, and I'm gonna say a hand pass. So it will be the Bandit's ball. Picking it up, look for it. Maybe thought about the home run pass, won't do that. Now Zach Dorval with it for Caledon. Flips it off for Andrew Rebecca, who was the top point getter in the last time these teams met for Caledon and is the top point getter this season for the Bandits. But he dishes that off. They're looking back to get it for Rebecca. Doesn't come to him cleanly, but he gets a hold of it. But one second on the shot clock, and he did a nice job to get a little roller off, but Martin made the save. Martin's had some trouble clearing these shots, these balls out, loose ball all in front of the crease, but luckily it rolled right into his stick. But still, they're gonna say, I believe they're still gonna say Kaladin ball. Yeah, just a little interference possession call there from Dylan Kuntz to stop him from getting a pick up the ball in front of the net. Can't get the pass completed cleanly there for Shepard. Still, Kaladin with it, loose ball scooped up again. Now they'll go back to the top of the point here. Huey Shepard. Fed across there for Goodwin. Ball bouncing around and there's a holding penalty that's gonna be coming up. And the Wild will hit the penalty box first so we'll get to see the Bandits power play in action. And heading off into the penalty box is the guy that got the scoring started today, Derek Jensen. The power play is now underway here for the Bandits. That one wasn't completed cleanly from on the stick of Thomas McClure, but he gets it settled down. That's where the man advantage really helps. Now fed around for Rubika. Get it back now to Rubika again, trying to set up some screens. Out on the far wing are the Bandits. Shot on, tipped in front, and nice job to hop up and get that was Matt Wyman. Wyman fed it out, nice little break developing there, and good job by Brayden Hahn to slow the tempo and let some fresh legs get on the floor for Wilmot. Hahn, nice job, bounces off a few checks. Spins away, still with it is Hahn. This is just some great penalty killing here from Hahn. Pinned up against the wall here is Hahn. Ball loose and Shot clock expires, but that's just perfect penalty killing by Braden Hahn. Yeah, and then it was nice work down low by Tyler Townsend to draw the possession call and have a chance here to kill another 30 of this penalty. And that's exactly what Wilmot will try to do here with Ethan Warden. Warden escapes free. Warden thought about the shot, but re retaliates, circles back. Tries to center up for Bessie, but will cop on the stick there of uh, Blake Weidman. Weidman with it, the roller. Nice stick save made by Trevor Wilson. First big save of the game for Wilson of the Bandits. 30 seconds remain on this Will on this Kaladin power play. Now give and go, Rebecca. Try to get it on the stick here for McClure. A big bullet goes on and it finds its way through the pads of Martin and a power play goal will tie this one up on a blast from Thomas McClure. Just a pretty shot there. Good movement of the of the ball by Kaladin, and that's one you know Martin wants to have back, Ryan. Yeah, uh, Kaladin did a good job at working the ball around and finding a shooting lane, and that's sometimes the problem when the goalies use the wooden sticks that they can uh, sneak through the cat cut there on the one side and end the five hole on them. And a faceoff is won here by Kaladin. Tried to fight his way through there was Radisa, but popped right back into the chest there of Martin, who was able to deal with it nicely. But, you know, you talked about it off the top here, Ryan. Kaladin, a much improved team as Jensen breaks in, and they're really showing it. You know, maybe before they used to be a little bit intimidated of these top tier teams, but not this case anymore. No, they're, uh, they really stepped up big time this year, and that was a pretty nice play there. But yeah, they are definitely showing that they can compete in the league again. Berger had a, two chances at it, couldn't find the back of the net as, Mark, as uh, Wilson made the saves. 
Now ball shot on, nice save made by Wilson on Radburn. Ball hops up still, fresh shot clock, but can't give me on the stick of a Wilmot Wild. It's gonna be won by Kaladin, but there's interference call on the goaltender, Trevor Wilson, so possession goes back for Wilmot, shot on, off the post on the blast from Girdler. And we'll go all the way back to the Wilmot end as they settle this down a bit. And a competitive lacrosse game to start here at the Wilmot Rec Center. Hayden Berger with it, waiting for a screen to get set up. Dancing around, looking for some space. Flips it up nicely, done, shot comes on, oh, scores! Nice oh. Jackson Martin gets the wild back out in front. He was cooler than the other side of the pillow on that one. And it's three to two for the wild. Once again, that was a great work by Hayden Berger to set up the feed and great patience from Jackson Martin. Yeah, uh, when they show the replay there, you'll be able to see you call that that Hayden was waiting for the screen here and Martin set a beautiful one and just outweighted the goalie and slipped on the floor but still managed to find a way to put it in. Yeah, there's a different angle from it. You can see just great patience and as well, such a diff difficult thing to get the shot off while you're falling down and find one top of the corner as the Wild are up three to two, but in a bit of an equipment issue right now for Trevor Martin, or Trevor Wilson, I should say, getting his pads tightened up. But great tempo to start this lacrosse game here on a Sunday afternoon with us here on Rogers TV, and we thank you for that. But you know, maybe you wouldn't think that before, but you know, as you said, Caledon's gotten better, but this Wilmot team's still really hungry to continue what they started from last year. Yeah, the past few years, they've, uh, they've been really competitive, and you know, they just want to keep pushing the pace and proving that they belong at the top and try to fight their way up into the Junior B loop uh, if they can. Taking this on the floor now here is the likes of Hayden Berger. Nice little stutter step, breaking in. Hayden Berger shot on, oh, and just getting a piece of that was Wilson. Uh, that was just a great save there and a great move. Berger, he's really stepped his game up off for Radburn. Now taking it on here is Weidman. Weidman still takes his time shot on, save made by Wilson. I don't even think he really knew where it was, just had good positioning. And a penalty coming up as falling to the floor hard there is Hayden Berger, so the Wild will have their first power play of the game. As heading out into the penalty box for Callan is number 16, Matthew Matamura. So a double minor actually is what they call that. Yeah, I was uh, checking from behind because uh, Hayden got a step on him and he just didn't want him to get the shot, so he gave him a shove and sent him almost into the boards. So a lot of time here to work with for the Wild. Berger, Radburn, Weidman, Martin, a lot of traffic. Couldn't really get the shot off as well as he wanted as the Bandits got some sticks in there. Now ball bouncing around and picked up here nicely by Dimitri Mizaros. Got a Wilma, uh, Kaladin player shaken up there. That's number seven, Brandon Marion. But he gets back to the bench under his own power, at least. He'll just have to find a way to shake that off. Looks to be okay. Banged up, but okay. Yeah, that was really good pressure from the Wild, too, between Berger and Martin to hold them off so they couldn't get it over in the 10 seconds. And now they got their second power play unit out here, hoping to find one. Kuntz across for the likes there of Jensen. Now they get him a shot on, nice blast from Ethan Warden and Wilson with a great save. Fed across now for Derek Jensen. Koontz and Jensen give and go from Weidman. Now back here for Koontz. Koontz thought about the shot. Now they get it in, Jensen going in, shot on, save made again by Wilson. And Trevor Wilson's really stepping up his play right here. A little shaky to start, but when called upon now, making those big saves, especially with his team down a man. Yeah, he looks like he's uh, finding a way to stay in the right spot. There's a couple that has hit him and he doesn't know where they are, but sometimes goalies get lucky and they just sneak their way away from the net. Berger waiting for that to come on his stick. Let's for the rest of his, waits for the rest of his line to come on. Berger for Martin, now for Berger. Tried to shot from Radburn and it's saved again by Wilson. They're trying to run up the floor as quickly as they can for this loose ball. 
here are the Caledon Bandits, but too many numbers in the white jerseys really help out there. Now up the floor once again will be Hayden Berger. Checks back at the clock to see how much time he's got left. On the man advantage, he has about a mi minute 47 left. Taking it on is Tyler Nagy. Already a goal this afternoon. Berger for Martin. Martin a drive, shot on, nice save made again by Wilson. And thrown to the ground hard there was Jackson Martin. Still possession remains for the Wild. Townsend for Berger. Thought about the shot, now give and go. Martin gets it on his stick, getting absolutely mauled. And that's gonna be a penalty, and it takes a big swing and a big shot, cross check, push, whatever you have it. And instantly, easy call, Lucas Correa heading to the sin bin. Yeah, I think he uh, might have got two or three penalties there. Just frustration taking over, couldn't get the ball out of Martin's stick. Wilmot did a good job there at getting the rebound, and now they're gonna be uh, down two players for at least a minute 22. Yeah, at least a minute 22, and then Wilmot will get another double minor, and that's something you can't have happen here, Ryan, especially how early, as much lacrosse is left in this game. Can't be affording to take another double minor for such a silly penalty like that. Yeah, those, uh, those ones usually end up uh, costing you later on in the game, but you said it, game's been competitive and you're almost putting your team in a hole early. And there's a great scoring chance from Ethan Warden. Just went wide, back behind the back flip. Warden again, shot on save made by Wilson. They're gonna say possession goes the way now for Taladin. Nice run, trying to get the run up here is Marion. Marion pinned up against the wall. Can he keep possession here? That's gonna be the real question. They're going to say hand pass. So still with it here are the Bandits. Loose ball now dug out, and it's going to be won by number 24, Derek Jensen. Settles it on now for Radburn as Jensen will head off the floor. Radburn weighing his options. Flips it across Townsend. Give and go back, and that one missed and didn't miss by much. That's something you don't see often, Tyler Nagy miss a wide open cage. Yeah, that was a really good pass back from Townsend and sometimes just doesn't find the nut, but that one did. That one definitely did from a tough angle. Tyler Nagy gets his second, this one on the power play. I think that was another goal from Tyler Nagy, which seems like a specialty, a little behind the back, and uh, no one thinks he's got an angle to shoot. Definitely always does. Yeah, let's take a look at it on the replay here. Berger doing all the work, but finds a man. That was just so fast. If you blinked, you missed it. And I think that's in the same similarity of how Trevor Wilson feels. Thought he had the positioning, but Nagy was able to find the back of the net from a near impossible angle. Yeah, just a quick uh, rebound off the boards, and I think Nagy put it in before the goalie even moved. And talk about just how tough it is to score from those angles there, Ryan. Yeah, just I think like I said, he grabbed it and wasn't even facing the net. Shot her around his back and it always finds a way in for him. And still Wilmot wants to keep pouring it on right now. Shot from far out from Koontz. Ball bouncing up, there's a quick shot. What a save made by Wilson. Yeah, Wilmot's still got a nice uh, two minute power play coming up here. They'll uh, definitely have some time to put in at least one more. And that's gonna be a penalty called on Wilmot for the hold. Uh, you really don't want to take those ones when you're up on a power play. I'm going to say a high stick as Ethan Warden heads to the penalty box for the Wild. So this is a big break right now for the Bandits as they're at two minutes even. So we'll have a four on four lacrosse for these two minutes. But definitely the next goal of this game you feel has to come the way for the Bandits. Yeah, I think if they want to stay in this game, they need to find a way to get one in here to at least keep it close. They're still putting the pressure on, ball bouncing around. Took a weird bounce up on, almost on the, the barrier between the glass and the boards. And trying to hit the home run pass for Bess. Can't really get it to him, he gets a, takes a shove. Bess trying to win that up, and nice job by Cody Hudson to swoop in and pick that up but they're gonna say it's gonna be bandit ball. 
now quickly trying to get up his floor as fast as they can here. Our Kaladin. Flipping that up for Thomas McClure. Trying to go across the floor is McClure. Shot on, take the bouncing one from Radisa. And that one just goes up in the netting, so it will be Wilmot ball now. Yeah, they got a chance here with some uh, more space here for Nagy, Berger, Townsend, and Radburn out there with their pick and roll game between the four of them. They should definitely be able to find a spot here to get one. Well, the way they've been playing so far, they're driven right now, they're in that zone. And as you said, the space, and there's another behind the back shot. That one missed, didn't miss by much. Radburn a drive, can't hit the target. Townsend gets it scooped up, a shot from far out, and making sure he's got it is Trevor Wilson, as just really trying to get that shot off before the shot clock expires, but caused a little more havoc than Wilson would have liked. Yeah, uh, those ones are always pretty scary for the goalies where they don't know where they are, and they end up in your equipment somewhere. Dorval broke his way into the Wilmot end and flips it off here, making the pass out as Cole Goodwin's got it. Goodwin a drive, nice save made by Martin. And scooped up by the Wild, trying to hit the home run pass. It's a little bit too much on that, as Hayden Berger will track it down. Took a bounce off the boards, but now Hayden Berger's got a hold of it. Hayden Berger on the near wing. Flips it off. Now Jensen gets it, the power plays are over. We're back to even strength lacrosse. Warden shot it off the iron. Just couldn't find it to get it down low enough was Ethan Warden, or this would have been a 5-2 game. Trying to break in. All the Wild, they flip it across. Can't get it cleanly there for Evan Girdler. And none of the Wild can actually get a hold of it. It's one nicely picked up by the Bandits. Now a loose ball, and Jensen comes up grabbing his arm. Definitely feeling the effects of that. Back out the other way, score! And the next goal of the game we said needed to come from the Bandits, and that's exactly what it happens as Kaladin gets within one on a nice situation for them. No one keeping an eye, and Zach Dorval gets the Bandits back within one. Yeah, I think uh, Kaladin in transition there took advantage of with Jensen looked like jamming his wrist and a couple other Wilmot guys slow going off. They uh, took advantage, had a little two-on-one, and uh, didn't make a mistake. Yeah, two-on-one. Got to capitalize. Obviously, everyone is concerned for the health there of Jensen, but still play was alive, and you got to keep playing until the whistle goes. Big goal there for Dorval. That's Dorval's second of the season. Back across the floor. Shot goes wide and almost out of, the, out of play when having to run back into his own end to pick this one up here is Tyler Townsend. And he will just do that as everyone's trying to get themselves set up. The pass out from Townsend for Berger. Stick was lost by one of the wild and that uh, hurts that play that Berger was setting up and trying to get back in transition here are the Bandits with Shepard. Shepard throws it on. Settling it down is Rebecca. Takes a bounce off the end boards. Trying to find it inside of the player in transition. Rebecca, though, nice job to stay with it, though, was Bro. And knocked down behind the net where was one of the bandits there. And Wilmot's got it. They try to hit the home run ball and just bounce right off the stick of Nagy. And Wilson deals with that easily. Yeah, he was, Bessie had Nagy wide open up there and just a little bit too far ahead and probably would have been a good uh, chance Nagy was scoring that one on a breakaway. Trying to get that separation, waiting for a screen to be set. Go across the floor to the Bandits. Settling this one down. I'm trying to settle it down at least, but still possession, they're going to say, goes the way for Kaladin. Looks like another penalty coming up to Wilmot here for, I think, a hold from uh, Dylan Koontz. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. Holding penalty for Dylan Kuntz. So once again, the Bandits will head to a power play where the last time they had the man advantage, they were able to find the back of the net. So here we go. Rebecca will take this one up. Rebecca at the top of the point. Now they get it back to him. Fed across there for McClure. And scores! 
once again from the same spot, Thomas McClure blows one by Caleb Martin, and we're tied up at four this time on the power play. Yeah, just like you said, a shot right from the same spot, and he changed the angle of it with a bounce shot, but put it right in the same spot, right between the goalie's uh, leg and his uh, wooden stick there. And there it was, just finding its way through Caleb Martin, and some good effort here by the Bandits because it was really been a lot of uh, ball possession and control of Wilmot. They had two double minor power plays and give Wilson credit, kept him in it because now Calvin is able to get themselves drawn level yet again. Martin spins, turn shot, deflected wide, steered wide by Wilson. Now picked up once again by Jackson Martin. Fed it across for his teammate and Weidman. Shot from far out, and they're gonna say possession goes the way of the Bandits. Waiting for everyone to get set up here. And the official drops the ball in the stick here. And trying to get a, the, the space and get up as quick as they can here is Kaladin. Now thrown across for Cole Goodwin. Flipped off, nearly fell out of the stick there as Shepard, and it does. Picked up nicely by Bradley Bro. Bro bounces off a check for Hudson. Hudson runs away from it so his teammates can make a line change. Now Warden with it. Warden, cross for Blake Weidman. Weidman, waiting, waiting, weighing his options. Tries to get it inside behind the back attempt from Hudson. Didn't get all of it, but good hustle coming on in to scoop up that loose ball by Blake Weidman. Couldn't, thought he got that one to find the back of the net, but the shot clock expires before it would have counted. Yeah, there's a good placement on the shot, just like uh, they're doing on the Wilmot goalie right now, except for the fact that uh, it was after the shot clock. So Thomas McClure has already got two goals today. Looking for the third right there, and oh, good positioning by Martin. Just got the pads on it. Nice break in coming in by Dorval. Dorval stops, pops, ret retreats some sticks, banging in the head of Lucas Correa. Correa. And no penalty called, much to the dismay of some of the Bandit fans that made the trek up here to Wilmot. But it's the Wild with possession. Hayden Berger passes this off for Koontz. As we've hit the final minute of play here in the first period for Radburn. Shot on from Berger, didn't miss by much. Good defense at the last second to get a stick on Berger's shot attempt. Yeah, that was a good play to open up Hayden, and uh, he got a shot, but probably not the one he wanted. Berger shot right into the chest of Trevor Wilson. He'll make that save 10 out of 10 times. And up quickly, here's Ryan Radisa for Kaladin. Flips that one off here for Goodwin. For Radisa, again, shot on. Nice save made by Martin. Ball bounces up in the air. Under 30 seconds left to go here in the first. Nice win out by the Wild and out comes Bessie. But they're gonna say, blow some whistles to call this dead as I believe Wilmot called a timeout. Yeah, I think you're right there with uh, 18 seconds left in the period. I think they wanna go into the break up by a goal so they'll get their uh, best offensive guys out there and hope they can get one. Well, they've had some success getting the, the ball moved, getting those pick and rolls set up. See if they can do that again here, but Callan's defense has tightened up a little bit and as well, Trevor Wilson's plays really picked up as this period has progressed. Yeah, I think you're right there. He, uh, I think you said it before, he looked a little shaky off the start, but he's really picked up his play and the defense have picked up theirs, getting their sticks on some shots and, you know, making him bounce a little wide and making it a little easier for Wilson too. Ryan, if you're head coach Rick Brindle, what are you trying to draw up right now for Wilmot so they can get that goal uh, after one period of play to head into the break with that lead? Uh, Rick's a really smart coach out there, uh, played for the last two years, so he'll probably have a play with a lot of movement between the six guys out there because he pulled the goalie and be a few picks and probably find someone back door with about seven seconds left on the shot clock. We'll see what Rick Windle has drawn up here for his Wilmot Wild. No shot clock, obviously 12 seconds. Koontz thought about the shot as to retreat. Koontz gives it back for Berger. Berger for Koontz, shot on, scores! Koontz 
gets the wild, the goal that they wanted so importantly before the first period ends and make this one five to four with 4.8 seconds left to go in the first. Yeah, you'll be able to see on the replay there, he uh, had the ball right from the same spot a few seconds before and backed out because the defense were coming to him. Gave it out to Berger and I think he gave it right back to him and he was left all alone this time and made no mistake. Yeah, let's take a look at it for exactly on the replay here, uh, Ryan. Yeah, got it, and the goalie went flying across, and he just put it far side and let the goalie fly over. So Wilmot wins the draw. It goes back in their own end, but the horn goes to end the first period, a very competitive first period, where the Wilmot Wild are up 5-4 to four on the Caledon Bandits in what should be a very competitive and tight game the rest of the way through. And we'll take a quick break and be back for more coverage here on Rogers TV with the Wild Up 5-4 after one. Okay, sounds good. I got uh, Tyler Nagy, number 15 for Wilmot. Welcome back to Wilmot Wild Lacrosse on Rogers TV. 5-4 wild lead over the Caledon Bandits after 20 minutes of play. Jack Moore floor side along with Tyler Nagy of the Wilmot Wild. Tyler, you had two beautiful beh uh, behind the back goals in that first period and then your team scores with 4.8 seconds left uh, to take a 5-4 lead after 20 minutes of play. How much energy does that bring to the If that's working, then uh, we know that everything else should be able to work and um, just keep rolling with it, you know. Just keep scoring and going into the second here. You could go on to the season 11 5 to Fergus. What were the adjustments that your, teams, that your team made after that loss, and especially a Fergus team that you're battling with for position in the division standings? I mean, the loss. It, we had to work on a lot of things because we took way too many penalties. We addressed that. We had to talk about that. and We also just, just basically it was just, just discipline and uh, got to play a full 60 minutes because we were doing pretty well up until halfway through the second. And then we started taking a lot of penalties. And when we were, we were, when we were five on five, we couldn't capitalize because our morale was just too low. So we just got to we gotta stay on a high all the way through the game, keep the energy up, and, and uh, basically just hope for the best and keep going. 
Tyler Nagy, who already has two goals in this contest. Wilmot leads 5-4 after 20 minutes of play. Coming up next, we'll have a breakdown of that first period and what's to come in the next 20 minutes. Stay with us. Wilmot Wild Lacrosse on Rogers TV. Welcome back inside the Wilmot Recreation Complex here in Wilmot, Ontario, where the, after one period of play, the Wilmot Wild are up 5-4 to four on the Caledon Bandits in what was a real exciting back-and-forth first period where Wilmot was able to call a timeout and get a, that go-ahead goal with about 4.8 seconds. But, Ryan, this was such a great period where we saw the best of Caledon and the best of what Wilmot can do. Yeah, I you know uh, Wilmot does a really good job in uh, their set offense and uh, set defense, but I think they need to work on their transition uh, this period. You know, Caledon always seemed to find a way once they got down there and with their power plays to find a way to put a ball in. Well, that's taking a look at some of the highlights. That's the opening goal of the game from Derek Jensen, but moments later, coming back the other way was Ryan Radisa to get this one leveled up at one apiece. But then let's take a look at this goal. This is going to be something of an absolute beaut. Bessie out on the run, gets it for Nagy and barely on his stick behind the back around the world. Highlight real level goal from Tyler Nagy and it's two to one for the Wilmot Wild. And Wilmot wasn't done then. They got it in the stick right there of Jackson Martin. He makes it at that point three to one. And you think Wilmot's gonna be in the driver's seat. Berger gets the feed off and shot came there for a nice goal by Tyler Nagy. But the Bandits weren't done at all yet. They found their way back into this one. They get the nice feed put on there, nice ball finding its way through, as that one was from Zach Dorval. And then this is a, a shot once again from Thomas McClure from the same spot. That was his second of the game. And that's where we thought maybe we'd see this one head into the break tied up. But Dylan Coots wasn't going to have any of that with 4.8 seconds left to go. He puts the ball in the back of the net, and it's five to four after one period of play where we saw in the first part of that first period, it was really all Wilmont, but give Caledon some credit, Ryan. They really tightened themselves up and were able to get themselves back in this game. Yeah, you said it. They were, uh, they were a little shaky at the start, but uh, you know, with uh, Wilson in there, he kind of stood strong, and the defense kind of started locking up uh, Wilmot a little bit, except for that goal at the end. I think they had a really strong second half of the period. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what adjustments both teams make as the second period is just moments away. So we'll take a quick break and be ready for second period action here on Rogers TV.
welcome back inside the Wilmont Recreation Complex where we are just about moments away from ball drop here for the start of the second period. And what a shot right to the head given by number 16, Matthew Motomura. I don't think they're gonna count the goal as there was a penalty called right off the, the hop from Mont Montmura. I was just gonna say, welcome back everyone, and how about that, right in your living room. I'm Jason Hagelm alongside Ryan Smart, Jack Moore out on floor level. And Ryan, what a start to the second period. Just nine seconds in and the Wild get a power play. Yeah, uh, we were talking that uh, the intensity was really up in this game from Caledon and showed right away with a check to the head off the draw and then a disallowed goal. Well, uh, the disallowed goal is going to hurt, but Wilmot's definitely got two minutes of a man advantage to make something happen right here. Berger. Now they get it back for Berger. Radburn tries to go up high on the pass for Martin. Shot on from fall, from Berger, save made by Wilson. Ball picked up by, by the Bandits, tried to hit a deep pass, but nice job staying in his own end was Hayden Berger getting a stick on that. And the Bandits can't get it over the, out of their own end, so the whistle goes, will be wild ball. Yeah, that was good pressure from Hayden there, caused the turnover and make sure they couldn't get the ball over in the 10 seconds they got. Weidman fed it across. Now they get it back here for Weidman. Fed off for Girdler. Give and go back to Girdler. To Weidman. I believe that's Kuntz that made the pass out for Weidman. Shot goes wide off the boards. Girdler tracks it down. Under a minute to go on this man advantage. Shot on its block. And Weidman get, tried to get the shot off, but the shot clock expires. Will be Kaladin balling out quick as can be are the Bandits settling this one down here is number 15, Bryce Thompson. On the far wing, skipping away from a check, Cole Goodwin. Goodwin has two wild draped all over him. One of them, one of them is Jordan Hawthorne who gave him a shot as he made the pass out. Good defense here by the Wild, forcing Callan all the way back. Behind the back pass, shot clock expires, but that's Great defense by the Wild to force the shot clock violation. Yeah, that was good defense from the Wild and really good uh, penalty killing by Bandits. Uh, would have been better only if they could have got a reset off that and killed a little bit more. Trying to get the shot off here. Only three seconds remain on the power play and they do! Jackson Mark gets his second of the game with one second left in the man advantage. So this will be a power play goal. Make it six to four for the Wild. Yeah, just in the nick of time there on the power play. I think the ball went down to Tyler Nagy and no one pressured him, which is one thing you have to do with Nagy. You can't give him any free space. And uh, it looked like he found Jackson Martin there on the far side who made no mistake. Yeah, let's take a look at this on the Wild Wing replay. Taking their time, good movement of the ball. And then they fed it across here and there's Martin bearing one. and. Back to the action now. Wilmot was looking to get one right off the faceoff, but up the floor now in possession. Here are the Bandits. Colin Sinclair flips that off. Now gets it across to Logan Lowry. Trying to get the flip on in is Radisa. Couldn't do that. Lowry with it, lost it out of his stick though. Bounces off a check here is number 52, Cole Elford. Alford doesn't maybe get much minutes, was trying to earn some stride there. Did very well though. Lowry throws it across for Rabika. Rabika shot on, save made by Martin. And that's the one thing I think we can really take away so far. Rabika had a big game in the first matchup this season. He's been very quiet so far this afternoon. Yeah, I think uh, the Wild's done a really good job at uh locking off one of their top players on their team and not allowing him any space to make some uh, moves that he does. Off to Kuntz now. Kuntz. Shot on save made from Wilson. Loose ball is gonna come away with it. It's the Wild. Flipped off here for Weidman. Weidman shot on nice save made by Wilson. 
Still loose ball all around the crease and still loose with it. Weidman dancing around. Nice save made by Wilson again. Weidman, third chance opportunity. Shot on the roller, finds its way through. Make it seven to four. And that was a great individual effort by Blake Weidman. Yeah, that was really good work between uh, Weidman and Dylan Koontz there on the crease. They just kept battling with uh, Kaladin D, who didn't collapse home to the crease to pick up the loose ball and came out after a couple shots from Weidman and just stepped back and ripped one short side low. And for Blake Weidman, that's his third goal of the season, which kind of, you may strike you as a surprise how much minutes he gets, but more of a guy that sets up the other scorers, but did a lot of great work there and was rewarded by himself finding one that passed, blew past Wilson. That's a big goal here for the Wild as they're up three. Still a lot of time left here for the Bandits, but the pressure, if it keeps on like this, I, the Bandits got to find an answer. And they've been struggling to get those shots anywhere in and around the crease as well. Yeah, they, uh, they're really struggling to get inside there. Wilmot's playing really tight defense and not allowing their shooters to get close, but... Uh, Calvin still has some shooters that we saw in the first period that can pick their spots uh, given space from the outside. Well, you can see as well, you knew that was one of the things Wilmot wanted to adjust from the first to the second. Don't let those key shots come from far out and continue not to let the Bandits in. And so far, it's been a plaguing defense. Let's see if the Bandits can make something happen with it on this possession. Trying to separate here is Rodisa. He's got a goal today. Nice individual work by Rodisa. Shot on scores. What a goal by Ryan Rodisa. Basically trying to fight off the whole Wilmot Wild on the floor. He's his second of the game. And now make it a 7-5 to five lacrosse game. Yeah, uh, Rodisa had a really good run down there. I think at one point he had at least two or three Wilmot checkers on him. But when they came to help, they were all going with the stick and... No one put a body on him and allowed him to keep fighting through and find a scoring lane. Ryan, just talk about how hard that is to do in lacrosse with everyone just draped all over you. Yeah, those ones are uh, pretty tough to get through by everyone, especially when uh, you get so many guys going on you and you don't really got an outlet to pass to and you got to battle the whole time. But lucky for him, he kept going and was rewarded with a goal. And I think that's the mentality that these bandits need to have. Keep going. A lot of lacrosse left. And they win the draw as well and got into the Wilmot end as fast as they could. Trying to get it up, shot on, save made by Martin. Loose ball, scooped up here by the Bandits. And there's gonna be a penalty called to both one of the Bandits and one of the Wild. Colton Bessie definitely going off for Wilmot and as well, Huey Shepard heading off for the Bandits. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, Bessie ended up on the ground. It looks like he might have been having Shepard's leg and a little lock there and wouldn't allow him to get free. So we'll have a little four on four action here for a bit, I believe. Yeah, some four on four lacrosse. This could be huge as well though, the, the space opening up and it is the Bandits that will get the opening possession here. And we'll see what the Bandits can do. Pass goes wide, bounces up off the boards. Staying with it though was Cole Goodwin. Goodwin bounces off a check, thrown on in the crease area. But once again, Martin does well to deal with it. Hahn fires that one up for Kuntz. Kuntz, nice move by Kuntz to break on into the goal area, but his pass misses everything and finds his bench. Possession will be picked up here by the Kaladin Bandits. And that's where they'll take it up just around the Wilmot Wild bench area. Now picked up here by Logan Lowry. Fed across for Jarrett Petrie. Now trying to find their options here. Nice try to move around here is the likes of McClure. Came back, picked up by Petrie for Lowry. Lowry needs a screen set shot from far out. Nice pad save made by Martin. Pinning one of the wild up against the boards. That's Cody Hudson who won the ball and will be Wilmot possession as we're at 53 seconds remaining in the two penalties of four on four lacrosse. 
Nice move by Weidman. Weidman breaks in. Weidman comes in. Shot on save made, though, by Wilson. Great save made, and there's going to be possession going still for the Wild as an unnecessary cross check from Lucas Correa. Yeah, it looks like he needs to keep his uh, temper under control there. He already took two penalties in the first, and he just keeps going after Martin. And one was a double minor as well. Well, fed across. Shot on from Girdler. That hits some sticks, but Berger picks up the loose ball. Actually, it's going to be won by the likes there of Martin. Martin behind the net, tried to find Weidman, and they're going to say possession going the way now of the Bandits. Up the floor, taking their time are the Bandits as Brandon Marion will flip that up. For Radisa. Both players out of the sin bin right now. Back to five on five lacrosse and a good save made by Martin. Getting a good burst of speed up the floor as fast as he can is Bessie. Off the stick, but into it, it does come for Nagy. Goes on the far wing here are the Wild. Townsend trying to set the pick for Koontz. Nagy, shot on, save made by Wilson. Just got it up on the chest to steer it wide. Radburn just does keep it alive. Fresh shot clock, Weidman stops, pops, has to re return, revert his direction. Go out here on the near wing. Now heads it out for Koontz. Koontz looking for a screen to be shut. Koontz shot out, save made by Wilson. Wasn't really sure where it was, but didn't find its way over the line, so once again made the save with the feet. Yeah, he keeps uh, pinching that ball there. He won't let anything go five hole on him anymore. Lowry flips it up, taking their time here. This time it's Jarrett Petrie. Tried to find Lowry, but pass is intercepted by Elford. Cole Elford with a head of steam as a near two on two developing. Elford fed it across for Wyman, and good back check coming back the other way was one of the bandits getting a stick on there, and he fights off two checks. Still with it now, here are the Bandits, and the Bandits will go back and forth. Good run developing here. That's Korea. Korea shot on, and that one just rolled off the line. That ball had eyes, thought it may have found its way through the pads of Caleb Martin, but Russ rolls out the other way, a big break for the Wild. Yeah, that was a full head of steam coming in by Korea, who's a Looks like a hard guy to stop going for Hudson, but uh, Martin came up with a big save there. Just a, some great transition the cross by both teams in those last two possessions. Pass goes up high and couldn't find the stick cleanly of Jackson Martin easily, though they found the stick of Trevor Wilson. Now look at the speed being displayed here by the Bandits. Really didn't get to see their legs going out and running early on in that first period. Colin Sinclair with it. Sinclair. Trying to bounce off a check, and he does. Getting muscled around by Hunter Schmidt. Trying to flip it back, and we're going to say possession now goes to the Wild as Schmidt got in the crease. Yeah, that was a really good defense from Hunter. He uh, came in as a rookie last year, but he's still a pretty big guy and just used his body and shoved the guy into the crease. Didn't let him get topside on him. So Martin. Flip it across, they get it here for Nagy. Nagy trying to spin, find a way to get a shot off, and they do, but a good save made again by Trevor Wilson. Still putting the pressure on here are the Wilmot Wild. Trying to bounce off a check is Berger, trying to get a screen set up, nearly did. Ball bounces off the boards, but Girdler shot on, hit some bodies in front, and steered wide. Will roll back all the way into the Wilmot end as Hayden Berger gets the speed on. 10 seconds remain on the shot clock. Still enough time to get something set up, but you got to do it in a hurry. Berger, a drive, didn't miss by much. Off the end, Borns will bounce out. Shot clock expires and will be bandit ball. And we'll just wait now for everyone to get set up. That ball's now dead. We'll get a fresh ball in. And here we go. The bandits with it. Taking it on is Huey Shepard for Radisa. Radisa trying to swim his way in. Nice swim move again. But maybe once again trying to do a little bit too much. Worked one time, but you can't go to the well one too many times. 
No, you're right there. He uh, keeps trying to do it all by himself, but that's why he got five goals. Oh. Five guys, that's a great goal there from Braden Hahn. And what a goal by Braden Hahn. The spin move, the straight separation, and it finds its way by Wilson. Make it eight to five. Yeah, that was a really great effort there from Braden Hahn. Uh, he was a uh, most improved player last year for Wilmot, and it looks like he's keeping those same strides going. You see here on the replay, just burns by the guy with the spin and puts a bounce shot short side on uh, Wilson. That's just amazing lacrosse to hit that spin move in, in live speed and then you just fire a sh an accurate shot on. That's just impressive for any level of lacrosse, wherever you're at. Unbelievable goal by Braden Hunt. And that's two highlight real level goals in this game. Definitely Wilmot right now feeling it in the zone and that's just... There's nothing really a goaltender can do in those types of scenarios, Ryan. No, he's really got to try and play uh, his position right, but sometimes you just get beat by a good shot and uh, might have shook him a little bit. He called for a water break, uh, hoping to slow down Walmart so they don't get any more momentum. Well, you know, if the, that's probably a good water break as well, one, because you probably do need the hydration. It is starting to get warmer outside, which means it's going to get warmer in here at the Wilmot Rec Complex. But, yeah, definitely want to slow down the momentum because this game was turning into a track meet, which that just suits Wilmot perfectly. But trying to get back the other way, good shot on, but penalty going to come to the Wilmot Wild. I think it might be both yeah. again. Yeah, it is going to be both as heading to the penalty box for Wilmot is number 10, Jordan Hawthorne. And for the Caledon Bandits, it's Thomas McClure, and that's a tough body for them to head off the floor already with two goals. Yeah, sometimes you hate to say it, but that's a good trade-off for Wilmot, getting rid of McClure, who's got two goals already in this game. And uh, we know Wilmot has a lot of good defense out there, but McClure has been one of the guys for Caledon that can put the ball in the net today. Trying to, officials talking this over a little bit, but I think they got it right. There was a bit of a scrum going on between Hawthorne and McClure just on the far wing. Yeah, I think they were trying to figure out whose ball it was going to be. It looks like it's going to stay Calden ball. Uh, Captain Matt Wyman's trying to figure out why it's their ball, but, you know, sometimes it is what it is. I think that's still the right call. Still possession should be, I believe, should still be there with the Bandits. And once again, two minutes for each team. So four on four lacrosse for two. Trying to get it, fed it in front. Good pass attempt from Petrie, but broken up nicely by the Wild. Now off here from Cody Hudson. Hudson trying to get out as fast as he can as a player streaking, that's Radburn. Had to get on the brakes, turn, fire, shot on, nice save made by Wilson. And it found its way in the back of the net. Staying with it was Cody Hudson, make it nine to five on the power play. Or excuse me, even four on four style, so not a power play goal. Yeah, that was uh, really good by Cody Hudson. He was a good outlet for Martin right off the start. Pushed the ball up, found Radburn who swung around the top of the dotted line there for a shot and Hudson kept digging for the rebound here. You'll see in a second and just picked it up and beat uh, Wilson before he could get back in the net. And that's why you say you gotta keep playing until they call the whistle. No whistle was, and Cody Hudson realized that at a step on goaltender Trevor Wilson and make it nine to five for the Bandits. And man, the Bandits really playing, still playing well, still staying at it. Shot from far out from Shepard was steered wide by Martin. But, oh, just couldn't handle that one's Berger. Berger nearly got a hold of it and had a ton of room to work with. Now the Bandits get it here. Nice stutter step from Lowry shot. Back goes wide. Picked up here still by the Bandits. They're trying to make something happen here. Fed off shot on from Shepard. Save made. Rabika save once again was made by Martin. And they're going to say because Rabika was, they call him in the crease, it's going to be Wilmot ball, look at this speed from Berger. Hayden Berger comes and shot a scores! What a goal by Hayden Berger. Put a little extra mayo on ketchup with that one. Make it 10 to five now for the Wild. Yeah, that was uh, a really good goal from Hayden there. You know, uh, they called the ball in the crease. Hayden picked up the ball and 
That's what lacrosse should look like. They uh, blow the possession in right away and Hayden burns by this checker and makes a really nice move on Wilson there who looks like he might be coming out for a water break or something else. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if uh, water break or or what, but what a goal that was for Hayden Berger. That's his 11th of the season and 29th point for Wilmot, which leads them overall this season. And you know, we've talked about this on broadcast before, but definitely Hayden Berger's really stepped his game up here, Ryan. Was kind of that pesky guy that you didn't want to see uh, opponents having to face. He's still that in some aspects, but now he's really become a pure lacrosse player. Yeah, you know, uh, Hayden's just really a uh, big glue guy for Wilmot. You know, everyone likes Hayden, except for uh, when you're playing against him. But he always finds a way to get under his opponent's skin and uh, can always put the ball in the net or distribute the ball pretty well for a guy uh, his size. He does everything right. Big win, uh, big swing of the stick. Kept that ball alive for the Bandits. They get it now. Taking it up the floor here is Colin Sinclair. Pass fed off for Shepard. Shepard shot on right in the logo of Caleb Martin. And they just haven't had those pure shots on there, right in the chest or good positioning from Martin. It's been a tough sledding right now for the Bandits. As the penalties expire, back to five on five lacrosse. Now Nagy, stutter step, nice move by Nagy. Shot on, save made, rebound, save made again. And this time, Wyman was in the crease, so will be bandit ball. And a penalty coming up to Kaladin. Looks like there might have been a slash off ball from uh, that player on uh, Jackson Martin as the shots were getting taken there from Nagy and uh, Wideman. Yeah, it's number 20, David Parent in the penalty box for Kaladin. And that's just something you can't happen. That may be the frustration of how this period's really just gone away from the Bandits, but still a ton of lacrosse left, and you can't give a team the such high-powered offense like the Wilmot Wild have these many power play opportunities. Give and go, off here for Radburn. Berger, now Radburn, and again Berger, and just great ball movement. That's been the name of the game so far, waiting his time behind the back shot from Martin, just steered wide. Now scooped up here by the Bandits. Can they find their way over the line? No, knocked out of his stick. Good back check cut play by Martin. Give and go, here's Nagy, giving back. Oh, it's really tough to keep your eye on the ball. Who's got possession of it? It just moves so quickly when it's on the sticks of one of the Wilmot Wild players. Yeah, it looked like they were getting a little fancy there with all their passes. Radburn tries to drive, shoved out of the, off, off the near wing. And one, now possession goes the way for the Bandits. Up the floor, avoiding a check. Nicely done here is Bryce Thompson, but just ran out of real estate as the defense was able to come back to help out for Wilmot. It's scrum going on in the corner right now for that loose ball. Now picked up here by the Wild. It's Schmidt. Fed in, and once again, Wyman shot and scores on the breakaway. This one is a power play goal, and it's the second of the game for Blake Weidman. Make this one 11 to five, and the route has now definitely been on. Yeah, that was a good battle by Wilmot on the boards there in their own end, and Hunter Schmidt came up with the ball, started to push the pace, and they snuck Weidman off the bench, who has, uh, had a big lead on his guy, and he makes no mistake. And what's really hurting right now is the Bandits is the speed for the Wild. Just unbelievable team of depth with guys that are quick, fast, can get that step on you, and it's just a track meet. Yeah, you're right there. Uh, Wilmot's really using their speed to their advantage here in the second with the long change. And uh, the thing with Wilmot too, they got a lot of smart players out there that know where the ball needs to go. And the biggest saying in the world of sports is speed kills, and it's definitely killing and burning the Kaladin Bandits in this second period. With still four minutes, 30 seconds left to go in it. So Wilmot has a ton of time, but so does Kaladin, a ton of time to at least get a couple to get that confidence back, because their wind's definitely knocked out of their sails 
uh, as this period's progressed. Yeah, you're right there. They just need to keep this game close. And uh, once they get to the third period, they'll have the short change like the first, and I think they uh, can make a little bit of a comeback if they keep it close. Now picked up here by the Bandits, it's Brandon Marion. Fed up on the far wing. Dealt with, almost ran into one of each other, but Jarrett Petrie did well to avoid that from happening. Fed it out on the far wing and score! What a goal, make it the hat trick for Thomas McClure from a tough angle. Yeah, that was a good uh, turnover previous to that from Caledon to get the ball back in the offensive end. They got their uh, offense set out there and got the ball to McClure who had a little bit of a ISO, just him and his defender and he ducked underneath the guy and made uh, no mistake there on Martin who it looked like that one might have been another five hole goal. Yeah, let's take a look at it on the Wild Wing replay here. Just taking their time, feeding it out. Nice spin move there by McClure and once he got that space he just Realize where his success has been, the five hole area, that's exactly where he went and no real movement. Thought he had the angle cut down, did Martin, but just great shooting there, shooter from Thomas McClure. Now been Bandit still with it, winning the draw, pushing away, trying to make something happen here is Radisa. Radisa goes in, bounce shot, can't find its way through. And the Wild pick this one up. And whistle goes will be Kaladin Ball still. Yeah, that was a tough play for Elford. Bessie uh, burned by his defender and El Elford went to set a pick and shoved him into the boards. All right, there's still a lot of time and just a quick shot right away from McClure. It's worked for him all afternoon, but he had a lot of time to work with. Maybe wanted to feed that around and try to get some more open space. Yeah, sometimes when uh, you're hot, you feel like everything's going to be going in. But uh, with that one, you're right. I think you need to slow that down and use the clock and find a better scoring chance. Well, the Wilmot Wild will try to make something happen after that maybe too quick of a possession from the Bandits. Shot goes high and wide and can't get it back on his stick was Blake Wyman. Shot clock expires. Will be Bandit ball. Got to track down the ball, though. As we said, these boards, these, this glass here at the Wilmot Rec Complex bounces very high. And it's really tough. Flipped on in now for the Bandits on the far wing. Get it across here for Petrie. Jarrett Petrie, a couple swim moves, stays with it. Weighs in and player streaking in. Shot on to the fight, it's way and it does! Good shot! on great work and that's again gonna go Zach Dorval's way on some great work done by Jarrett Petrie. That was a just a great offensive set there by Kaladin they work the ball around and find Dorval who gets a step on his man gets a shot and it looked like that one might have been almost like a funnel hit Martin and ended up in his five hole and snuck its way in again. Let's take a look at that there's Petrie just finding the streaking Dorval coming on in and it just followed the bouncing ball and this time there's been plenty of balls that have bounced off the lines for Wilmot but this one they're not so lucky on. No and Cody Hudson tried his best diving reaching between the goalie's legs to stop it but just wasn't enough. Well here's the Bandits yet again they've ramped up their play as this period starting to come to a close. Radisa trying to get a pick set. Radisa trying to use his size to his advantage. Penalty coming up to the Wild. One now on the loose ball from Shepard. Shepard a drive, shot clock expires, but the penalty will be coming up to Cole Elford, so the power play will go the way for the Bandits. Yeah, the, that Radisa player out there, he's a real big body, hard to handle, and got a step on Elford, who had to hook him and hold him and slow him down, and Calvin has a chance here with this power play to get it within three. And that would be huge for them, especially for how bad this period got away. At one point, they were down six. So, Bandit's got to go back to work. And that's what they do. They get it off here for Andrew Rubica. Now, nice try behind the back pass. Couldn't be completed cleanly. Scooped up by McClure. McClure shot from far out. Doesn't miss by much off the boards. Big drive. That time from Petrie, but a great save made by Martin. Yeah, that was uh, not a very good uh, possession there from Calden. They were just shooting the ball, uh, no movement, no nothing. Uh, goalie had time to get set and was there for every shot. 
Ball bounces up high, and they're gonna say, still possession here for the Bandits. What breakaway scenario, save made by Martin, absolutely robbing Dimitri Mizaros. That's a big save from Martin on a breakaway off a quick uh, reset, and uh, here comes Hayden Berger. And well, Hayden Berger, he's a guy that loves those quick reset resets. Saw him get a uh, goal on that similar scenario, just ran out of real estate on that possession. Still now 46 seconds left on the man advantage. And picked up here, and a great run by Sinclair. Sinclair going in, shot on, and it doesn't miss by much. He wants a penalty to be called, and one will not be. Yeah, it looks like uh, Weidman got away with a hold there. He was tucking his jersey back on that breakaway, but it's going Wilmot's way right now with 20 seconds left to see what they can do here. 20 seconds, a shot clock. See, well, has been turned off, I was gonna say. It was, was counting down, but it is now turned off. 10 seconds remain, pushed up against the wall. Here's Radburn. Radburn shot from far out, save made by Wilson. And did well to at least make sure he still had it. Gave up one like that earlier on to Cody Hudson. Settles it down and the action keeps getting hotter and hotter as this game progresses where the Wilmot Wild will head into the break after two periods of play up 11 to seven, but a nice pushback to close out there by the Bandits means we should probably have ourselves one heck of a finish, Ryan. Yeah, you're right there. Uh, you were saying how Calden was coming back late and uh, would have been nice for them to get uh, another one there with their power play, which only has five seconds left to start the third. But as long as they keep it close there, I think they'll uh, be good for a good third period. So after two periods, it's the Wilmot Wild up 11 to seven on the Caledon Bandits. We'll take a quick break and be back for more coverage here on Rogers TV. Yeah, I got yeah. Well, I got uh, you got who I got? If that <laughs> uh, number six on Kaladin, Andrew Ribka. Three, two, one, gonna ask you uh, about you know the game so far. Obviously, they kind of pulled away in that second period. So what you guys gotta do in the third to come away with a win, and uh, your team's leading forward. So. Welcome back to Wilmot Wild Lacrosse on Rogers TV. 11-7 Wilmot Wild lead the Caledon Bandits after 40 minutes of play. Jack Moore floor side with Andrew Ribka of the Caledon Bandits. And Andrew, your team was down 5-4 after the first, but now it's 11-7 down by four heading into the final 20 minutes of play. What do you guys have to change to come away with a victory and get even at 500 on the season? Uh, I think our defense got better in the second period there, but uh, on offense, we just got to keep firing on this guy. Um, whether we're shooting from outside or inside, we just got to keep putting peppering balls at him, and I think we'll be able to come back and win. 
So Wilmot, a team that's higher up in the division than you guys are, you guys sitting at three and four, but you are the team's leading scorer so far this season. So while your team sits one game below 500, what's been going right for yourself so far on the year? Uh, just good teammates. We're, we're working well together. We're getting good chemistry, um, and it's only going to continue to get better from here. All right, that's Andrew Ribka, the leading scorer of the Caledon Bandits. They trail the Wilmot Wild 11-7 after 40 minutes of play. We'll have the third period coming up for you after we get a breakdown of the second period. Stay with us, Wilmot Wild Lacrosse on Rogers TV. Welcome back inside the Wilmot Rec Complex here in Wilmot, Ontario, where the Wilmot Wild are up 11 to seven after two periods of play in what was, a, once again, a back and forth period where it was really Wilmot for the majority of that period dictating, but gotta give credit where credit's due, Ryan, where these bandits, they keep fighting their way back into this game as we take a look at some of the highlights here. Yeah, you said it, uh, Calvin. They uh, got down early, well, a few goals in, and just kept battling back to make it uh, ready for an interesting third. That's a great individual effort here by Weidman to get the ball fought on, finds its way through. That one, first it doesn't work, reset, set himself up, and just a little roller that blows its way by Wilson. That was the first of the game for Blake Weidman. And this is a great individual effort here by Ryan Radisa to get himself his second of the game, just bouncing off a couple wild bodies. And that started the momentum a little bit for the Bandits to get back in this game. Yeah, you're right there. It started the momentum, but here you see Braden Hahn's goal, which was, you mentioned, a highlight reel goal with a spin off the check and a nice shot and uh, kind of slowed Calvin's momentum again. And just looking at Hahn on the replay, I think he can't believe that found its way in the back of the net. <laughs> And still staying with it once again is Cody Hudson has just outreached the, the stick there of Trevor Wilson as the Wild were starting to pour it on. You thought maybe the route would definitely be on. And especially with this one, quick transition goal by Hayden Berger right off the hop. Found its way through, took a spill to the floor, but that one found its way to the back of the net. And then there's Weidman getting himself his second of the game on a breakaway, showing that the speed definitely kills from the Wilmot Wilds point of view. Yeah, Wilmot's transition was really well there in the second period with a nice pass from Hunter Schmidt before, but there's Thomas McClure again with, I think that was his hat trick you mentioned. Yep, definitely. And that was another one right through the Martins five hole. And then this is where, uh, towards the end of the second, where the Bandits really started to turn it on. 
great job to bounce off a check there from Zach Dorval. Found its way through Caleb Martin for Dorval's second of the game. And that's really where we're at right now where the Wilmot Wild are up 11 to seven, but as well, there's a five seconds left of a power play for the Bandits to work with. Yeah, I don't think they'll be able to get much with that uh, power play. It'll probably just last the rest of the face off here, but they can definitely uh, pour some on uh, once the period gets going. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting third period. This has been a very competitive game. We'll see what happens in the third. Welcome back inside the Wilmot Rec Complex where the Matt Wyman just adds to the Wilmot Wild lead, make it 12 to seven. It's Wyman's first of the game. And for Matt Wyman this season, that's goal number four. Yeah, that was a good play uh, showing up on the replay here. A nice pass by Kent Radburn. Finds Matt Wyman right alone on top of the crease. And his first couple years uh, in Wilmot, that's where he made his living, just right on top of the crease. That's a huge goal right off the hop, about just under 30 seconds into the start of this third period. And for the Wild, you know, they want to keep putting the pressure down, especially since there's been a bit of life shown from the Bandits to close out that second period. Don't want to give any teams hope. You can't let a team stick around as bad things happen with that, and I think Wilmot knows that. Yeah, you're right there. Uh, the good teams know uh, how to finish an opponent off, and. You know, Wilmot needs to prove that they're up there and do that today. And they're looking to do it right now. Good burst of speed from Bessie. We've seen that a lot this afternoon. Gets it on in, tried to feed it off from Warden onto the stick of Weidman. Couldn't get that completed cleanly. Warden hanging around waiting, gets it off here for Bessie. But pass barely makes its way through. That ball definitely had some eyes before finally being scooped up on the stick of one of the bandits. And it lost his stick, and that's a roller that finds its way back in for Trevor Wilson. Yeah, that was a big yard sale check there from Tyler Townsend on the Cowden player trying to run the ball out. And we just get another one right there from Blake Weidman as well. But this time it's the bandits up with Dorval getting into the Wilmot end. Trying to get that separation there was Petrie. Nice work by him. Off here for Dorval, tried to get it on his stick, didn't happen cleanly, but still gonna say, bandit ball. Uh, that's a tough bounce for Matt Wyman there with uh, 
the ball squirting out by the blue line, and he just shoved his guy who fell over for a possession call. You gotta make something happen here if you are the band. It's a lot of time left, so you wanna get one of those quick goals to settle your feet down and keep on pushing. Ball bouncing around, but still on the sticks of the Bandits. Hack to try to keep this alive, and it's gonna go the way of the Wild. Hudson. Still with it, but now bouncing up actually. Ball took a couple weird bounces, but Trevor Wilson did well to be right on the doorstep to keep that one out of his net and on his stick. And for his teammates, Colin Sinclair needs that screen set and got one, but wants to revert direction as Girdler is like a heat seeking missile all over him. But good job by Sinclair to get it out. Big hook gonna be called up. Shot comes on still from Ribka. And penalty now will be ex extended out here. And once again, Jordan Hawthorne heading to the penalty box. Yeah, I think Kaladin uh, needs a big goal here to keep it uh, within four goals and give him a chance throughout the rest of this period. So here we go. Big power play coming up right now for the Bandits. They'll cycle this around, picked up by McClure. Then for Ribka. Ribka stutter steps, shot on, save made by Martin. And then the ball was picked up. Nice job to avoid the check, but lost it out of his stick. There was Hunter Schmidt. Now scooped up with it, shot on, nice save made by Martin to get down in that butterfly position. Yeah, that was McClure coming in again, looking for his fourth, tried to put it in the same spot, but it uh, looks like Martin's learned his lesson and he's gonna start going down. Yeah, he and you know, we really don't see a lot of those goalies here at this level try the butterfly style, so good on Martin to realize the situation and go down. Bessie flips it up here for Berger. Berger tried to make a move, but maybe a step too quick, didn't have the ball in his stick. Back the other way is Brandon Marion. Marion the roller, but Berger got a stick on it. Bounced up high, hit the roof, so will be wild ball. Yeah, that's a tough shot for Cowden to make there in a two-on-two -two transition with a power play. Probably should have pulled that one out and let the offense set up. Berger making some damage once again on the near wing. Off here for Warden. Uh, now makes the pass out for Radbert, who's got a wicked shot. You see it there, but Trevor Wilson makes the save. Yeah, Kent, uh, Kent Radburn has a pretty hard shot from the outside, and Calden's done well tonight to uh, kind of shut him down. Like you mentioned earlier, Wilmot's done with Ribka. Yeah, Ribka's got to find a way. He had a huge game in that opener, but really quiet so far tonight. And there's a great chance that didn't miss by much as Dorval was just inches away from getting that hat trick. Yeah, that was a big uh, save off a rebound for uh, Martin there. And one second, that's gonna do it for this power play that the Bandits had. Hawthorne comes back on the floor. Ball can't be coming to the stick cleanly there of David Parent. And back the other way here are the Wild. Flipped it off, Weidman. Wyman, I should say. Turns, redirects, shot on save, made by Wilson. Nice try from Martin, can't shove that one on in. As once again, Trevor Wilson's come up huge. Yeah, that was another big save off a uh, transition from Wilmot. And a uh, good rebound there from uh, Martin, who tried to sneak one by Wilson on the far side. Big feed across, but it's broken up nicely by Kuntz. And look at Kuntz, he'll show what his speed's made of, and makes a couple nice ch uh, jukes and jives, looking like a running back out there. Yeah, Dylan Kuntz is a very smart player. He uh, sometimes tries to do a little bit too much and gets him in trouble, but when he just goes out there and plays the game, uh, he's pretty good, pretty effective. Body check comes from Berger, trying to knock the ball off the stick of Mizaros. Gonna say possession still for the Wild. And Wilmot waiting for it, gets a hold of it now with the ever so dangerous Weidman. Weidman's having himself one of his best games as a Wilmot Wild. Loose ball now scooped up 
by the Bandits with Colin Sinclair. But got to find their way through is look at this good press being put on by Townsend. Townsend trying to knock the ball out of his stick. And being draped up, nice takedown. Unfortunately, you can't do that in World of Lacrosse. So a penalty will be called on the Wild. Still trying to keep it alive are the Bandits. And finally, Wilmot touches up as heading to the penalty box this time is Blake Weidman as he upended the streaking on in Colin Sinclair. Yeah, between uh, Tyler Townsend and Blake Weidman there, they were both going for that big uh, check around uh, Sinclair. They had the body position on him and he got too close and Weidman ended up taking him down. So here we go, power play is underway yet again. Big opportunity again for the Bandits. Ribka off for McClure. Now they back across the far wing, trying to get the shot on, and that's off the post as Dorville yet again was robbed of the hat trick. Settling it down, here's Radisa. Nice job, this is, this is what you'd like to see out of a power play, taking your time, not rushing anything. Shot on this time, good save again by Martin. Ribka thought about the shot, can't get it there, and it's gonna be broken up and will be wild ball. You mentioned right before that that they were doing a good job at uh, moving it around for a good shot, but that time there, Radisa tried to force a pass in that wasn't there, and it cost them. Definitely did, did cost him because look who's got it now, Matt Wyman. Matt Wyman breaks in, Wyman shot on, nice save made by Wilson. That's a big save there to keep this one close for his team. Maybe the biggest save of the game. We shall see, still about 12 minutes left to go. Shot on in. This time from Girdler misses. Martin a drive, bounces up high and just out over the, the glass. So will be the ball for in possession for the Caledon Bandits. Bandits trying to get out here and they've got the, those big boys on for them to help try to stir that comeback. The Ribkas, the McClures, the Radisas. They're all on the floor right now. Big shot on and tried the same shot, did McClure, but this time, once again, Martin was wise, so it had the stick between the, the legs. Yeah, you mentioned it before that uh, sometimes they try to keep going to that same well, and looks like Martin's learned so far in this third period. But can't get the ball out as fast as they want, so picked up here by Matthew Motomura. Now flip back the other way from Goodwin. Behind the net. Trying to get some something to set up, so nice job by McClure. Settles it down, but the penalty does come to an end. Shot on save made by Martin. On the far wing there is Radisa. Radisa spins away. Trying to flip it on in. Taken down was Ribka, but Possession stays alive for the Bandits. They want it to be, looks like the officials want it to be reset up from where the whistle had originally been originated from. Trying to get that screen set for Radisa. Ball hit some bodies in front and nice job to scoop it up for the wild is Colton Bassey. Yeah, once uh, Colton gets run in there, he's uh, pretty hard to catch and here he is in transition again. Behind the back from, that, from Radburn that time, but once again, a good save from Martin, or from, excuse me, Wilson. Action's just hot and heavy right now. Yeah, it's uh, got a good pace here to start the third period, but Calada needs to start putting them in if they want to make a game of it. Yeah, they've definitely had a better start to this third period than they have the first and the second, but having shots that are being saved easily by Caleb Martin, has been a huge benefactor right now for the Wild. Yeah, you're right there. They're not uh, getting as nice as looks as they were before, and they're settling for some uh, poor shots, and uh, Martin's eating them up. Berger, a cross back for Girdler. Now back, oh, look at this. Great chance coming on in for Weidman, but they're gonna say he's in the crease. Will be bandit ball. Yeah, that was a nice take by uh, Weidman there. Uh, I think he should have kept driving right along the crease and dropped his shoulder, but he kind of stopped up and got shoved into the crease there. Lost the ball out of his stick there was Motomura. 
but did well to get it back and blocked in, and the pass was broken up there by Jordan Hawthorne who was streaking in. And now the Motomura has lost his stick, trying to have to play as much soccer as he can. Will be possession still for the Wild. Schmidt trying to get set up quickly, but Hawthorne runs off the floor for some fresh legs. That was a really good defense there from Hawthorne to block it and get his offense back out there for a chance to get another goal here. Nagy, nice stutter step, trying to break in, spins away. Still with it though. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Shot goes high and wide, but bounces off the end boards. Trying to make it happen there was Jackson Martin. Just fell in the crease again, so will be bandit ball. They tried to hit the home run pass for Colin Sinclair. Just couldn't be completed cleanly, and now Sinclair pinned up against the, the boards by Bro and Elford. It's another tough uh, possession call to give away there by Bro with just a little bump on the boards. Good chance denied again from Dorval. Getting a body out in front at the last second. Loose ball picked up here by McClure. Thomas McClure getting it in front. And once again, Dorval off the post. That's two times in this third period that he's been denied a hat trick thanks to a post. Still though, Radisa a drive doesn't miss by much. And that'll roll all the way back to the Bandits end. Scooped up here by Wilson for McClure now. Trying to get up as fast as they can. Fed it in front, shot on. That time it was from Logan Lowry. And that ball bounces up into the wild bench. Wild get knocked off the ball, but Hayden Berger will easily pick this one up for his Wilmot Wild team. Nice little stutter step. Nice. Job to break on into the bandit end. Berger flips it across. Weidman tried to make something happen, but one move too many and the ball fell out of his stick. And now it's Kaladin that's got it and tried to muscle the way up into the Wilmont end. Now they lose the ball. Flipped on in, tried to get it for Berger. Berger's got himself a behind the back feed for Nagy, just a little out of his reaches. And now nice hustle being displayed here. One on, oh, one on one scenario here for Brandon Marion. Shot off the boards, comes back for Marion, but broken up nicely. Getting back there was Braden Hahn. Yeah, that's another tough one for Kaladin. They worked so hard to get the ball, have one of their defensive players go up and shoot a contested shot with a defender right on him. Berger gets this pick set from Martin. And now they get it back here for Martin. Martin swims, comes on in. Martin shot on, save made by Wilson. And the shot clock expires. They're gonna say a fresh shot clock though, but got that shot right on. And save was made by Wilson on the drive that came from Radburn. Yeah, you mentioned it before that uh, you gotta play the whistles and shot clock expired, but the clock wasn't reset. So smart play by Radburn to keep going through and get another shot off. And that's exactly what they, ha they have. Wilmot Wild, smart lacrosse IQ on their team. And they've taken advantage of it a lot this afternoon here against Kaladin. A couple quick reset goals. Well, the one in particular, that big one from Hayden Berger. And that shot is blocked by from Wyman on the drive that came from Shepard. That goes way up into the lights. Can't be completed cleanly, but finally does bounce into the stick there of Tyler Nagy. Two goals this afternoon for him, including that one unreal behind the back goal. Weidman stops, pops, re retur returns to where he was at, gets it off for Townsend, shot and fire quickly from Evan Girdler, but it's gonna be bandit ball. Yeah, Wilmot's getting a lot of nice looks right now. They're just missing the net and missing their spots. and. They need to hope Kaladin doesn't start hitting theirs. Jack Webb got it up quickly here for Zach Dorval. For Ribka, now for Dorval. Dorval trying to just drive in the lane with a lot of traffic in there, but shot on, and that was an easy save for Martin. Just out of the reaches here of Kuntz. Loose ball, who's gonna come away with it? And it will be Braden Hahn of the Wilmot Wild. Time now also starting to be the enemy for the Kaladin Bandits if they want to make this comeback. Approaching five minutes left to go. 
Trying to get the separation and some pick and roll scenarios set up. Kuntz spins away from the body of Marion. Broken up though nicely by Mizoros. And shot clock expires and there's some frustration going on as looked like Ribka or Petrie, I should say, was trying to get into it with Kuntz, but good job by Kuntz to walk away from that. Yeah, you mentioned it too. A lot of high lacrosse IQ on Wilmot. Petrie was frustrated. Can't really find uh, the net right now when his team needs him, and it's good that he didn't take a penalty there because that could cost him. Bouncing shot that came from Lowry. Easy save on a tough situation there from Caleb Martin. Shot on, right in the, the logo, save was made by the likes there of Wilson. Or by Martin, I should say. Settling it down now will be the Wilmot Wild as this is where they just want to eat up the clock because they know they're four minutes away from picking up a big win once again on home floor. Yeah, and uh you know, they're a little short-handed on offense since I think the first period when Jensen went down, he never returned, and they kind of got to use every second of the 30-second shot clock uh, to give their team uh, a little more of a breather. And they were doing that very nicely, but whistle went, and it will be now why, uh, bandit ball. And there's Ribka, who's been held pointless this, at least goalless this afternoon, which is a bit of a surprise for this Caledon Bandit team. But other guys had to step up and they had definitely done that. It's just this defense from Wilmot is just so tight and tough to get shots on. And as well, the goaltending play of Caleb Martin really stepped up in the third. Yeah, you're right there with uh, Wilmot shutting down Ribka since the start of the game. Uh, it's kind of opened up secondary scoring like Thomas McClure, who I don't even think had a goal before this game. But you know, check the score or the stats, but They've uh, done really well to find other options tonight. But this is a team that always does well to find options if someone goes down. And just when you have that much depth stacked offensively like Wilmont does, you can have someone step up any night. Like when you look at tonight, Jackson Martin, a guy that's really stepped up offensively. Yeah, he's had a big game, a lot of good scoring chances, and is uh, willing to cut through the middle to put the ball in the net and uh, showed tonight with uh, his goals. Still though, the Bandits still fighting, and you gotta like that. Some teams may just lay down and call it a night, but that's not what this Bandit team's all about. You can see that's just, we talked about how much they'd grown so far from this season to last, and once again, tried to go five hole was McClure. Stick save was made, but they may have grown talent-wise as well, Ryan, but they've grown definitely mentally because they're still playing until the final whistle. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I think within the last couple years, uh, once the score starts getting a little higher, like it did in the second period, that's when they'd uh, kind of lay down and stop playing. But uh, not this team tonight. They uh, they got fight through the whole game. Townsend gets it up for the Girdler with a lot of space. Shot goes high and wide and takes a bounce all the way into the Wilmot end. And slowing that one down nicely is Caleb Martin. Girdler's had a lot of good uh, chances to shoot here tonight, but uh, just couldn't hit the net. What a move by Nagy, and that one finds its way through. Tyler Nagy, give him a hat trick. First goal of the third period as well with 1.33 left to go, and once again, just some pretty work done by Tyler Nagy. Yeah, uh, just a very nice play by uh, the Wilmot player who passed him up the ball, and Tyler Nagy's got two goals tonight that were behind his back and around the world and it'll show here on his one-on-one -on -one, he faked his behind the back which got the goalie moving and then beat him on the short side here on his wrong side yeah, just impressive lacrosse iq as we said it before and we'll say it again just get the little fake when you got such a deadly shot from behind your back as you do in front of it everyone's gonna bite every time you do that and defender bit got that space and found the back of the net this one rolled its way through, but the benefit worked out there for Nagy and the Wild as they go up 13 to seven here. Yeah, Tyler Nagy, I, I believe he has one of the best sticks in the Junior C loop and he uh, shows it every night when he's out there with his highlight reel goals. Now picked up by Goodwin. Goodwin behind the Wilmot net. 
Fires that up to the point, try to get the shot off, and there's Dorville raw, denied for about the fourth or fifth time here in the third period of that hat trick as we hit the final minute of play here in the third. Yeah, with uh, Dorval, sometimes you know that you're uh, one goal away from the hat trick and you start trying to force it a little too often instead of letting the game come to you and kind of showed here tonight so far. A lot of traffic in front there, a big double whammy that Jackson Martin had to feel the wrath of. Luckily, he's up and fine. And the ball found its way behind the net for Kaladin instead of over the line and in it. And I think Colton Bessie realizes the clock situation. They'll just play keep away. And that is pretty much going to do it for this edition of Wilmot Wild Lacrosse here on Rogers TV as they'll just let the clock tick down in a very competitive game, Ryan. Definitely a very competitive game. Kaladin showed a lot of heart, a lot of fight, but just too much firepower that this Wilmot Wild team has. Yeah, I don't think uh, the final score kind of showed how much fight Kaladin had within them. They just couldn't find a way to get it done in the third period. And with their power plays, it was just a tough go for them. But uh, they're a growing team, and I'm sure they'll be finding ways to win throughout this season and seasons moving on. It was a real good third period for Kaladin. Really came out with the fire and the intensity that you'd want in a team trying to make the comeback. But every time they had those shots on their high shots, Martin could make the save. And when they tried to go five hole, Martin, give him some credit. The backup figured it out. Get the sticks down or even go butterfly. So great sh showing by the backup goaltender here in Caleb Martin. Yeah, it's not just the uh, Wilmot players that uh, have a high lacrosse IQ. You can see it with Martin there kind of shutting uh, the door down with the five hole shots because uh, he learned his lesson within the first two periods. Well, that'll do it for us here on Rogers TV for this edition of Wilmot, Wilmot Wild Lacrosse as the Wilmot Wild win it 13 to seven over the Caledon Bandits. And we'll see you next week here for Rogers TV, Wilmot Wild Lacrosse as the Oakville Buzz will be in town. So for my broadcast partner, Ryan Smart, Jack Moore on the floor, I'm Jason Hagelman. We'll see you next Sunday when the Oakville Buzz are in town. Have a good evening, everyone.